Okay, 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 we are back. So let's talk about one of the most important parts of roguelites. Generation. So procedure generation is pretty important, it's a very vital part of roguelites. But it doesn't necessarily mean that the world you play in has to be completely random. Look at Riskarine for example. So each stage has a few different variations of the map that a game will choose from. This works for Risk of Rain because each map is so big and there's a lot to explore. On the other hand, Enter the Gungeon has random dungeons, but all those rooms are chosen from a pool of room layouts, so it's not exactly completely random, but since they are placed randomly throughout every run, it still feels pretty fresh. So what I want to do is kind of go in between those two. So since my world is bigger than just a dungeon, I want it to still be pretty random, but still kind of have some structure so there's some consistency throughout every single run. I can't exactly make entire maps like in Risk of Rain because my world is humongous and I do not have 5 f***ing years to make maps. So yeah, um, let's talk about what I did. So here's my idea. Each biome will have several possible chunks that a map can generate from, so it's kind of like how Risk of Rain chooses from a bunch of room layouts. Now, that's all well and good, but how do we actually decide where to put those chunks? Okay, basically how I did it is, I have a map generator that stores a 2D array, which is basically a grid. Each node in a grid has a value of either 0 or 1, and it's in- Fuck, dude, oh my god, talk! Okay. Words. Um, each node in the grid has a value of either 0 or 1. 0 means the node is free, and 1 means the node is occupied. So the map generator will start generating from the top left of the grid. It first picks a random chunk from a pool, and gets its size. Then it checks whether there is enough space in front of the node that's currently checking from. If so, a chunk will be generated. If the space is occupied, the map generator will skip a few nodes before trying to generate another chunk. Once the entire row is done, the generator will start moving down and place more chunks until the entire map is generated. <sighs> until the entire map is generated. Now, is this method perfect? Well, no, of course not. Nothing's perfect. Just ask him how much he thinks about you. So, the world can feel a bit static because of how everything is relatively evenly placed from each other, so I added a bit of randomness to the positions of the chunks, and the end result looks much more natural. So I'm pretty happy with what I have here, so I'll just leave the map generation as is for now, probably. Might make some changes down the road, but yeah, this is basically the core of it. Generation is a pretty complicated topic that varies a lot depending on the game that's in question, and there is no one size fits all. <laughs> Generation is a pretty complicated topic that varies a lot of. Oh my god, the fing read the script. Generation is a pretty complicated topic that varies a lot depending on the game that's in question, and there's no one size fits all solution. What I did here works for this game but may not work for others, and that's fine. The important thing is that I learned a lot about how to actually think about this stuff. That's it, and that's the end of this devlog. Kinda a boring topic today, so I'll leave you with something a little spicy. So here is a preview of the boss fight I'll be covering in the next devlog. See ya. Thank you.